Hello, this is Greg Allison from Green Greg's Garden and Worm Farm. I'm going to talk to you today about some emergency winterization of my aquaponics greenhouse. Basically, we've had a unusually cold early arrival of winter here. It's gotten down to uh, in the low 20s last night. And, and last night, you know, it's like this is the 10th, I guess now the 11th of uh, November. And so uh, I had to take some quick steps to make sure that I wouldn't have problems in my greenhouse. This is my first really cold snap here. So didn't entirely know what to expect, but I knew I needed to do some things. So I'm going to go over real quick what I did, and uh, we'll see what the results were. Uh, essentially, the good news is, even though it got down really cold last night, and now it's about up to freezing outside, let me show you what the temperature is in here. The temperature in here, as you can see, is about 38 degrees which is good now one of the things that probably I owe that to is the thermal mass of all the water there's about 5,000 gallons of water in my system here you can see I'm just starting out most of the lettuce in here is just lettuce from uh, some flats that I washed the roots out and stuck in here right now I did have a lot of uh, baby lettuce which I'd started about I don't know, 1,500 heads sitting over here on these shelves. You may recall that from an earlier video. But I took that out and put it in the house on my microgreen racks. My microgreens are a little crowded right now. Uh, you can see some of the new starts I've started to put in here. And I've got to go ahead and finish this up. These are the, uh, using the Grow Grips from True Aquaponics. You can get those at trueaquaponics.com. They seem to be working great. That's the two inch size. I understand they're sending me some one inch. So this is uh, what I got in here so far. Again, yeah, this stuff sat outside in flats for some time. Some of it got hot and you can see some of it. A couple of those started to go to bolt. Plus they were tall and skinny because they were in the flats that overcrowded so long. Now these heads have started really leafing out. These later ones said it have not these look like those when we first set them in here so the system seems to be working out fairly well now what I did in addition to this thermal mass I don't know 5,000 gallons of water but look at all the volume of air in here the ratio of water to air is somewhat less than absolutely impressive I have seen uh, my uh, friend uh, uh, Diamond from Oppenheimer Ranch Project uh, he said a lot of thermal mass in his greenhouse, a lot of water, and his water occupied a good fraction of the volume. Of course, he's up in Colorado. So, uh, one of the things I did last night was I set up this uh, kerosene heater in here. And it has finally burned out to the point now that it's actually even cool. Now, the reason I put this fan on top, I was concerned that maybe it would create a hot spot on the roof. And I wanted to disperse the heat coming out whether it or not it would actually create a hot spot on the roof I did want the heat dispersed as much as possible in here now this heater actually could heat my house almost on a, on a cold night uh, inside so I don't know what uh, maybe it may be only get 23 25,000 BTUs out of this thing though so that's really not what you need in here but I was just hoping it would help uh, keep things from getting too cold not to heat the place up so when you're growing lettuce, the advantage of lettuce is it can actually stand freezing as long as the roots aren't cold. This water is the main key. Now, I have had an electrical contractor bring a pull of power out here, and I got 100 amps of power. But what he didn't do is give me more than one amp, I mean one outlet on a 20 uh, amp breaker, which is insufficient for running two uh, of the... Uh, Actually, it's insufficient considering what I got on my circuits. It was insufficient for running the heat water heaters, stock heaters that I wanted to put in here. And so I went, you can see I've got one outlet so far in this 100 amp service. Now he's supposed to come and give me more service, but I didn't have it. And I was really worried last night. So I ran two long extension cords. I actually had to go to uh, Lowe's to buy one of them. And these go all, one goes all the way back to the barn up here. And the other goes back to my vegetable harvesting area in the house. So what that means is each line is rated uh, at 15 amps and it can pull 12 and a half. That's pushing it for such a long run. 
the one that goes to the house which runs further had to have 300 foot extension cords I did start out with a 15 amp cord uh, for the first 100 feet so I know your resistance drops is over the distance I figured the first critical first 100 feet was the most critical now this is all still an experimental phase I was trying to save money not buy spend uh, 60 something dollars per cord but essentially these are going to stock heaters that are inside this tank and I only could put two out here so the middle tank didn't have one I've got one on each end hoping the ends will help keep the middle warm uh, and there it is there's some of my fish maybe you can see those don't really focus too good it's pretty dark in here still the other thing that was done to winterize you can see I got all this plastic flap on here now and we got it cinched down and I can roll it up and I got hooks up there now to hold it uh, yesterday it got to 90 degrees in here with everything closed up actually 92 that heat may be part of what gave enough thermal mass in this water I don't feel too bad in this water to uh, uh, keep this greenhouse 10 degrees warmer than it was outside well, last night every time I come here it wasn't more than uh, it didn't get down a little uh, colder than 38 degrees in the greenhouse the other thing it did was cover up all these little uh, faucets valves I had out here which is intended for the solar panels I want to put out here I just haven't had time to build the solar panels so I covered these up so that is uh, in a nutshell what I've done to winterize this uh, big greenhouse and uh, let's see close this back here the you know I'm trying to build doors to put over these and the whole idea is in here I'm gonna run the pipes out to the side and I'm gonna put shelves in here for my lettuce starts next to the water tanks uh, just you know a lot more stuff to do than I've had time to do and I wasn't expecting this cold snap to hit us so fast you can see some frost out here in this uh, dead grass and uh, definitely got some frost out here the turmeric uh, I don't harvest that until it's just completely dead and it probably will be today it's not already it is a tropical plant but anyway like I've said before my garden has grown up because I've been exceedingly busy over the year running both my uh, power grid defense conference and doing uh, that's wet out here doing my uh, uh, working a lot of overtime at work we'll see how this lettuce survives this cold snap you can see some of the uh, ground is pushed up a little bit in here there's actually some onions planted here some little green onions and a few of them are starting to come up even and uh, I think this this one is actually uh, elephant garlic the last one I planted that's why it's small then you can see here there's a little bit bigger green onions now lettuce is frozen but lettuce usually snouts back but it was pretty darn cold last night I'm hoping that lettuce out here will snap back enough for me to uh, take to the farmers market next weekend in any event you can see these green onions are a lot larger now they're doing quite nicely and uh, I really don't expect to harvest them until next spring. They should winter over fine here. I've had onions just like this take me into the winter. I put them out in spring. So the, the weather did get this tree here. These leaves are dead and dying and falling off green and never had a chance to turn colors. And my God, this cold snap hit us all at once. It was, you know, we went almost straight from summer to winter here. What happened to fall? I don't know. Yep, it finally took a toll on these tomatoes. I come back here and picked a whole bunch of green tomatoes off these vines and some vines in my aquaponic system beside the house last night that system is uh, 10 years old and here it's where just a few weeks ago I planted some of this uh, elephant garlic and holy smoke that stuff is really popped up in any event so that gives you kind of the nickel tour of the garden today of the aquaponics greenhouse uh, you can see out it's here I've also got the same kind of flaps I originally planned to build doors to put over this was made out of this material here this poly and put over these windows for the winter time 
hey I just didn't have time so we put flaps here and again I got hooks below here to hold it down yeah it's a little loose but you know what can you say it's, this is all meant to be rolled up everything is on 100% tight these are the hooks for what to hold it when you got it rolled up and uh, filled that hole there as you can see and got them over here yeah we're still system's not perfect and uh, there's additional work we can do. I'm going to have to come by here and open things up possibly later today because it's going to start to warm up. I'll just have to watch the temperature. I'll let it probably go up to 90 in here. Uh, maybe a little warmer before I open things up. The lettuce locks it warmer, uh, cooler than that, but for a short period it may not hurt it. Especially when they don't have much in here. I like to keep the heat up. And uh, as you can see, the sun has been up for about an hour. It's finally got up to freezing now outside. And uh, we're just going to quick tour here. In fact, I'm going to go around the other way. I don't have all my... I've been, I was working on rabbit cages. They're not all full, filled up. I do have some rabbits. Over here, just a few. Hello, rabbits. How you doing this cool morning? Nice New Zealand whites. And uh, we'll go up here by my barn. Pardon me if I'm walking too fast and the slew rate on the camera might be a little nutsy. I'll do some videos and talks about building this barn one day. Hello, Mr. Rabbit. How you doing this morning? Oh, we cold. You don't want to talk today, huh? I don't blame you. <laughs> anyway. So, you can see I got these steps out here in the log barn. And here is my trommel that I use to harvest my worms and worm castings. It's all homemade. I will cover that more in depth in the future. Barrel type worm beds, not suitable for weather getting this cold. Have my worms in bigger beds with more thermal mass walk-in cooler which i'm still working on yeah this farm is still somewhat embryonic uh oh yeah one of my cords comes from the barn the other comes from this veggie wash station area which i'm also still working on and i got to get a tree off of now i had a tree fall on it so this is my other aquaponic system this is my old continuously flowing media bed system that's over 10 years old these tomatoes were doing great until last night. I went ahead and actually trimmed some pieces off of it to try to get cuttings to start. Because these are nice thick vines. I figured they might like it if uh, maybe I can get them to survive. I don't know. Preserve them for a while. This don't look frozen. There's a little bit of a microclimate here. So uh, I've actually had tomatoes in the December survive out here. We'll see how they do. Uh, I have... This system, problem when I first built this system was I thought I needed to put too many pipes in here. I didn't, there wasn't any guidance much on building an aquaponic system, so I built this. I overbuilt the plumbing. I'll talk more about this system in the future. But the, so what, the way it's turned out with the pipe coming in on top, uh, even when you clean the system out, eventually the algae will grow in the gravel and the, before you know it, the water will be running across the top, which is not what you want in the media bed. But anyway. So I got ryegrass started in here to get this system through the winter. And I got a little ryegrass over here. Metabolism on the fish will slow down so it don't have to be a whole lot. And you can see the fish, big goldfish in this system. This system has minnows in it. I'm trying to raise minnows because I have worms. Why not have some minnows for bait? And I got some microgreens in here. I figure they might want to eat that stuff. So the minnows are plant eaters. I put, I feed them ground up cornmeal, organic of course. And uh, plain, no self-rising stuff. Anyway, so this is my original aquaponic system. Now, this system's been running for over 10 years. I've grown cucumbers, tomatoes, lettuce, uh, chard, and uh, even grown uh, okra several times in here. But not okra growing, and, and, and with the roots continuously in water. So uh, yeah, this is not a fill and drain system. It's continuous flow. Uh, but it works. Here's my stock heaters that I've got out here. These are older, as you can see. I need to get some metal baskets to put on the ones inside. Anyway, those fish aren't too active. They're, they're a little cold, but you can see this stuff flows right out here. And uh, those filters there are probably a little bit clogged up. 
up to before. So, oh, I can see some minnows. I don't know if you can see the little minnows swimming around in there. I seem to be happy to have some plant matter to play with. So some of my older microgreens I put in here. In any event, so that just is kind of the nickel cure. Again, Greg Allison on a sunny, cold morning in uh, the heart of Dixie, uh, Tony, Alabama, about eight miles south of the Tennessee border. Uh, this is how I prepared my aquaponic systems. And you can see I got free flowing water here with those stock heaters in there. Uh, usually, in, in the past, uh, 19 degrees is where I really had to have heat out here. The system would flow, but it would be starting to freeze up. But 19 degrees, I have to shut it down because everything would freeze up. So I put the stock heaters in. So that's what I do for the system out here. The greenhouse is going to be an interesting adventure here this winter. It's going to be a hard winter, it looks like, because it's come hard and fast. Anyway, once again, Greg Allison, Green Greg's Garden and Worm Farm. And I wish all of you a very nice, safe winter. Stay safe. Drive careful. It's crazy out there. I hope everybody stays warm and has a happy holiday season. Bye.